Hi everyone! In this video, we will discuss the basics of how to build a simple SOAR playbook in Mission Control. Let's get started. So we're starting here in Incident Review. I'm going to select this incident. So in the Summary tab, we have the series of key value pairs that have all the data coming from the Notable itself. Take a special note of this destination uh, and we're going to just particularly talk in this case about how this data came here, this destination country, and how you could do that with SOAR. So let's get started. I'm going to start by clicking the content tab right here at the top. I'm going to open it in a new tab. Now you'll see on the left hand side, I have a section called automation. I'm going to click into playbooks. Now this is going to take me to the SOAR instance and open up the index of all the playbooks. I'm going to hit plus playbook here. So we start a new one of type automation. Now I'm in SOAR's VPE or visual playbook editor. Today we're going to leverage these action blocks. These action blocks are SOAR's ability to connect to third party tools or services, leveraging API integrations and pull back the necessary data. We will also be using this mission control block here at the bottom to be able to take actions through the playbook editor that we would normally do through the UI. So let's get started by dragging out a line from the start block. And the first thing we're going to do is run an action. For simplicity, we're going to run a geolocate action. So we're going to geolocate an IP using MaxBind. So you can see that once I type in the action, it shows me what tools I have available to do that action. Now we also need to tell it which IP it should geolocate. If we refer back to our incident, you can see that in the incident itself, we have an IP address here in destination. You can see that in this case, the destination uh, is the display name, but the actual field is dest which you can see by hovering over the field name. So dest is the field that we're gonna work off of. So when we click into this, we get what we call the data path picker. This is really gonna tell us uh, how we can identify what data in the incident we want to input. Now you can see that it has two sections here, one for events and one for incident. Incident covers all of the incident data and events covers all of the data that would appear in the events tab here. So if you've added events through search and you want to be able to do enrichment on that data, you can also do it by leveraging this event section. But for now, we're gonna leverage the incident section. You'll notice that there's only a few values here, even though there's a lot of data in my incident. That's because we filtered on IP. So we're only showing fields that have an IP address in them. If we remove this filter, we can see all of the data from the incident. But for right now, we're gonna keep this filter on and we're gonna remember that dest was the specific field that we were interested in. So I'm gonna go ahead and select dest. This is actually the data path. After we have that action, we want to, for the analyst's convenience, put that data or the resulting information in a place that's convenient for the analyst. So instead of having them have to click to the automation tab and look through the results, we're gonna actually put those results in a summary field. So we're gonna leverage this mission control block here, and we're going to use the set summary fields API. Now, first off, I'm gonna quickly add the incident ID. So I'm gonna go into incident, and I'm going to scroll to find the mission control incident ID. And then I'm going to click this plus item, which gives me a key value pair. Setting summary fields is essentially going to add another key value pair to this list here. So I get to name the field. So we're gonna say geolocate country information. These are the results coming from this action. So we're gonna go scroll to the country name. That's the resulting data that we want to display. And then we're gonna end our playbook. When I go to save the playbook, it's gonna prompt me to fill in a couple more things. I'm gonna title my playbook and I'm gonna say the name of my playbook. And I'm gonna say it operates on all. This is actually a list of all the incident types in my instance. And uh, I can filter or select a subset of incident, incident types that this playbook is allowed to operate on. One other feature that I wanna call out that you can use optionally is this active toggle. Should you want your playbook to run automatically without a user hitting a play button, 
uh, specifically for enrichment or actions that you want to happen before an analyst even looks at the incident, you can toggle your playbook to active. But right now we're gonna leave it off and we're gonna run the playbook ourselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this playbook and we're gonna add a comment. Just as another side note, all of the playbooks are written in Python. If you or someone on your team is comfortable writing Python, you can edit the Python code for the playbook at any time directly here. Now let's go ahead and run this playbook. So we're gonna go back to the incident and go to the automation tab. And we're gonna use the run playbook button. And we're gonna look up the playbook we just wrote. I'm gonna hit the run playbook button. And you'll remember that the name of the field we called it was geolocate dust country info. Now the playbook has run. You can see that I see a max mind uh, base visualization. You can see that the geolocate information was successful. We can see the geolocate desk country info right here. Our playbook ran, completed both of its actions, set summary field and geolocate IP. You can click into each of these actions to get a more detailed look at either of them. Note that it could have also put this data in a new event uh, or, in a, or in a note, a series of other places, depending on the type of data and the flow you want your analyst to follow. This is just a simple example of a very minimal playbook. Thank you.